I wanted to show you a little um, module that I found on eBay in my um, in my endless quest for perfect timekeeping. Uh, I was looking for a, a good source of 32.768 kilohertz uh, as a time base, and this is one I found on eBay. I'll, I'll put up the um, the uh, eBay listing. Amusingly, it's uh, only one seller on eBay sells these from, from China, and um, they're, that's it. They're, I can't find them on Amazon. I could not find this anywhere else. Uh, and also, I'll, I'll put up the, the eBay listing. But what it is is a temperature-compensated crystal oscillator, which is, real, which is basically this little metal can here. Um, and it's a pretty straightforward circuit. It runs the specs, and I, I've tested it, and I'll show you how, what, it, what the output looks like. But um, basically, you, you put in anywhere from 7 to 10 volts into here. There's a, um, there's a low dropout voltage regulator here, which regulates it down to 5 volts uh, even. Um, and that feeds, uh, and the LDO has some resistors here and a couple of, a couple of decoupling caps. That feeds the, t the temperature compensated crystal oscillator module, which basically just has four pins, um, the five volts in and ground, and 32.768 uh, kilohertz um, TTL levels output and, and ground. And the maker of this module uh, has a 74HCO4. Um, There's just a hex inverter, a hex inverter which they, uh, they're using as, a, as an output buffer so you don't load down the TXCO unnecessarily. And you get that uh, at this output here. Um, I was going to do a, you know, it did not come with a schematic. It really didn't come with much of anything except, you know, the specs. Um, I wanted to do a schematic of this, um, but it turns out this is a multi, this is at least a three or four layer board because, you know, the, the top half is pretty much as it should be, almost entirely a ground plane. And then the uh, the bottom layer is entirely just about entirely a ground plane, uh, except for this trace here. So in order to do a proper schematic of this, uh, I'd have to basically buzz out every connection to every other connection. And the fact is, there's not much. There, there's really not much going on here. I assume they're just using one of the six gates as an output buffer. Um, it's going through a resistor to the output here for protection and. Apart from that, the two resistors here, two decoupling capacitors, um, a bigger input filter, input filter capacitor, and output filter capacitor for the LDO, and that's really all she wrote. So, um, you know, a schematic would be kind of obvious. I'll put up the specs for the uh, for the LDO regulator and then the 74HC04. At least, at least uh, the maker of this was kind enough not to obliterate the markings on the on the two semiconductors. Never mind the the temperature controlled uh, crystal oscillator module. And so what you get is 32.768 kilohertz um, within, you know, within a fraction of a hertz coming out here uh, nicely, nicely regulated. So it's a, it's a pretty nice time base actually and I'll, we'll go to the scope and the frequency counter and, and see what comes out. So here's the eBay listing uh, for that little 32768 temperature compensated uh, crystal oscillator module um, on eBay. By the way, this is I paid for this with my own money. It's not sponsored or anything. Um, this is the only place I've actually seen such a module, um, and he does appear to uh, offer modules just like this, but with higher frequency crystals uh, all the way to tens or hundreds of megahertz. This is the lowest frequency module he offers, and it's the one I needed. Amusingly on mine, this little circle on the actual um, oscillator module has a has a hologram, is a little tiny hologram, so you know it's genuine. Anyway, that's the eBay listing. Here's the 7404 uh, they're using on this module. Um, just it's, it's just obviously just a hex inverter. I suspect they're just using one of the inverters here uh, as an output buffer, and that's fine. If I designed this, I probably would have done something like a a 4060 instead for the same footprint, which would have given me uh, the option to maybe jumper 
uh, different divisions of the 32768 or, or whatever. But anyway, that's what they did. And for completeness, here is the 1117 low dropout voltage regulator they're using on this little module. Um, they're using the obviously they're using the five volt version of this, uh, which technically uh, can work from anywhere between six six volts in to ten volts in and gets you five volts out. And I tested it and it works just fine. Um, nothing terribly exciting here, but it's it's just nice that uh, the module gives you a little built-in regulator in case you don't have an even 5 volts. I'm feeding the module just shy of 10 volts, 9.6 I think I measured on the DMM and as you can see it's it's drawing, I haven't measured it with a with a digital multimeter but it's drawing virtually no milliamps of current so um, it's well what it should be doing. The LDO uh, regulator on it seems to be working fine. I did measure the output of that regulator on this little board and it's 4.96 volts which is what you'd expect so the module is nice it uh, internally runs on 5 volts produces TTL out but it'll, it's rated to take up to 10 volts input and here's the output of our little TXEO module uh, on the scope uh, 1 volt for division so we're getting 3 volts out T TTL nice TTL output nice square wave and uh, 32768 one kilohertz per the scope. I know for the frequency, I trust the fr I trust the uh, frequency counter a little bit more than the scope, but yeah. So nice enough, works as advertised. So here's our little uh, 32768 kilohertz module, temperature controlled oscillator running on the uh, feeding the 5348 frequency counter. Uh, the nice thing about this frequency counter is it's got a uh, an oven controlled uh, temperature compensated oscillator as its time base and right now its gate as you can see is running once uh, once a second um, the bad news is this is really intended for much higher frequencies so this is all the resolution I can really get out of this counter um, I can reduce the resolution in other words I can up the gate time by moving the slider so here we have 32.77 32.8, which is technically accurate, but not very resolute, 33 or 34. And it, this goes all the way in up to 18 gigahertz, uh, which of course, uh, this is, wouldn't register much at all. Um, so there's 32.769, and it's only, and, and, and again, it's uh, good to plus or minus one count regardless. So it's spot on, but uh, not, not much resolution. Here's the little, oscill little oscillator module uh, feeding the uh, 5316B counter. Um, again, we can get much more resolution on this counter. Um, and I can decrease or increase the gate time uh, to get more digits. Uh, so it's pretty much spot on. Um, and again, if I want to increase the gate time a little more, I can get that last digit of precision more or less. Um, so the nice thing about this counter is it gives you more resolution. Um, it's not in, it, it is a frequency counter but it's really more a period counter and it does also have a, uh, a temperature control uh, a temperature compensated uh, internal um, time base but it's not oven controlled um, but it, it's still uh, it should be still pretty accurate. 